Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. It is face-off time. Shireen was so excited. She said, let's have a Vranitz face-off. So that, uh, <laughs> yeah, as you can hear, she's excited about it. So I have two glasses. Maybe she'll be in the frame. Maybe she won't be. We'll see. But anyways, we are back in Belgrade before we head over to Bosnia-Herzegovina. Um, we brought back a few Vranitz bottles with us. And we're going to taste them off, see which ones we prefer. Now, remember, Vranitz is, uh, what we talked about in earlier videos, it's indigenous to the Montenegro area, but in Macedonia, they've kind of taken over. And 90% of the world's Vranitz is actually planted in Macedonia. It is a relative of Primitivo slash Zinfandel slash Kerstik, which uh, is Croatian, and that's the original Zinfandel. But... They are big, high alcohol, fruity, acidic, and tannic wines. It really, uh, Vranitz means actually is a breed of a horse. So that's why they named the grape Vranitz. You need to be able to control it. They're big, powerful wines. I did not include my two favorite Vranitz to make this uh, a more of a fair challenge. <laughs> my two favorite were Chateau Kamnik, the Tewa Vranitz, but that's retailing for about 80 US dollar. And uh, this guy, Bruschani, he only makes a couple thousand bottles a year. His Vranets, uh, I really liked his, so it wouldn't be fair if I put it up against these guys. <coughs> Excuse me. I just wanted to show you this bottle before we start the face-off. This is another grape in Macedonia that has potential. An indigenous variety called Stanushina. 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 I'm sorry. This is the, the Stanushina from Bruschani Winery. Now... There are only a couple examples in the country. They kind of call it the Macedonian Pinot Noir. It's lighter colored, uh, lighter flavor. There's some notes of spice. It, it not, maybe like, not quite like Pinot Noir. To me, it tastes more like a Norello Muscalese from Sicily, uh, from the Mount Etna region. But enough with that rant. Let's get on the wines. <clears throat> Just so you know, I chose these wines in the face-off because all of them are available worldwide and in the U.S. market. Uh, I've tasted these two in the in the winery. I have not tasted this one yet. So let's give it a go. I've chosen this one first. This is by Chateau Sopot, uh, a fairly new winery. Shireen really liked this wine. This Vranitz is, it's either unoaked or oaked for only just a four, four months. Uh, more fruit forward, more, uh, more easy going Vranitz, and that's why I chose it. It was really... A nice price. Here you go, Shireen. You can take that bad boy. Now, <clears throat> one thing you're going to see with Ranets is there is no shortage of color. This one is purple with a garnet rim. Is that what you say, see, Shireen? Let's give this one a little bit of a smell, shall we? Vranitz gives off a lot of a lot of blue fruit, but this one I'm actually smelling a little more red fruit and uh, black fruit and a little bit of blackberries. Not as much blue fruit. No, nope. not at all. A little bit of dirt. Yeah. Not too much oak, right? I don't, I don't. I can't remember if this was only oaked four months mm, or very little. There's definitely oak influence, but it's soft. Very it's soft. Vranitz Vranitz is such a big flavorful grape. It does have hints of tobacco in it as well. That vranit sometimes can swallow up the oak, which is kind of cool. Let's give this a taste. A lot better than I remember at the Chateau. This wine, as far as I remember from the previous time, it takes a while for it to open up. Mm. Once again, this is Chateau Sopo, 2013 Vranitz. Vranitz is really um, got a lot of confusing flavors and it takes some time to figure out, so bear with me for a second. Fruit from front nip to the end palate. That's a fruit thing. all the way, but not a fruit bomb. It doesn't explode in your mouth. It stays really tight. Vranitz has this unique milky, not texture, but taste. Mm -hmm. Almost like a chocolate milk taste. I get a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of chocolate, just a slight bit of cedar. Shereen, anything else? A little bit of dry herbs in the taste. A little bit of herbs. Mm. 
As far as it's off, it's off to a good start. I think I gave this like a a mid, <coughs> excuse me, a mid three score in Vavina, like 3.5, 3.6 off to go back. This is another reason why scores can be bogus because it's all about your mindset, how you feel. Like how I'm feeling right now, this wine to me, we're looking probably 3.8-ish on Vivino out of five, which means it's pretty darn good uh, for my in terms of my personal, how I rate the wines. The next one is a new winery, big. They're producing four and a half million, uh, million liters a year, Stoby. This is their Vranitz Veritas from 2011. Now, this is their top wine. Uh, somebody, the winery, when they gave me the tour, told me that the Washington Post named this like the best, like the best value red for under 15 euro, euro or something like that. I can't remember what it is. Hold on, I'm going to give this a little bit of a rinse. Um, I chose this one for the competition. This one was a little bit more balanced than, uh, if I remember, and a little more industrial tasting. Not saying it's an industrial wine. But it was well balanced, it was smooth tannins. It was just something that in, uh, the international palate would really, really like because Vranitz can get a little bit wild, a little bit out of control. First thing when I pour this bad boy, it is dark. 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 You can hear Shireen, she's so <laughs> excited about Vranitz. Face off. Face off. So, whew. And it does not even have a garnet rim. It is just dark purple to black, wouldn't you even say? Heavily <clears throat> oak influence. Let's give this a nose. It's not completely opaque. Just some clarity. <sighs> so funny, it's smell all the vranets taste... With all the vranets, I usually smelled a, a lot of blue fruit. But this not, the first thing I got was violets. Game. Game, black fruit, like meaty game, literally. Yeah. A little bit of oak. I'm really liking this nose. You? Yeah, but um, I always prefer a little more fruit flavor or fruit nose. This yeah. is just completely oak influence for me. I smell, I, so funny, I smell the fruit, the fruit, the game, and the oak pretty balanced. And this is why wine's objective too. Shereen and I are smelling different things. I smell violet, blackberry, game. Blue fruit is starting to come out a little bit more. Mm. And a little cedar. Let me give this a go. Yeah. What I like about Vranitz is when you suck on it, it reminds me of uh, those fruit popsicles I used to have when I was a kid on a hot summer day. <laughs> I'd suck on it to, to take all the fruit flavor out of the ice. And that's what you have to do with Vranitz. You really have to suck the flavor out. Chocolate, black oh. currant. Chocolate, black currant, a blue fruit. This one's a little bit more full-bodied than this one. I don't know how high the alcohol is on this. Very this one's 14.5%. Vranitz can make some wines up to 17% alcohol. This is 14%. 14 and a half, 14. So this one, you feel the body a little more. I feel a little wood influence more than this one. It's less fruit, definitely. I remember that when I scored this in the winery, it was 4.1 uh, out of 5. I would say it's about the same now. Uh... Bal well integrated fruit, wood, uh, a little bit, of, a little bit of uh, the tobacco -y chocolate smell. Not as milk chocolate tasting as this one. Vranitz can taste milk chocolate sometimes. So uh, it's pretty good wine. I, four, if I still stay four point one, I think it's really, good. Really smooth, body. smooth, super smooth tannin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Vranitz, the tannins can just get uh, completely out of control. So please, with that effort, you please. I think in the U.S. If this is available, I think we're looking at 15, 20 US dollars. I think it's a pretty good buy. The next one I have is a Boven, the Dissan 2013. It's the Vranitz Barrique. I chose this wine um, because Boven was the first private winery in post Yugoslavia, Macedonia. 
Uh, and we tried their top wine, the Imperator, on a previous video. It was a little too sweet for me. I was expecting more. From what I told, this is a heavily oak-influenced wine. So I chose it to contrast more fruit forward, balance, and then I have not tasted this yet, but supposedly supposed to be a little heavier oaked. Now, I don't know the re I just know what I paid in the cellar. So when you pay in, when you buy wine in the cellar at the point of origin, it's obviously a lot less. I'm guessing that this wine from what I paid, oh, that's okay. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Sorry>. It happens. <laughs> uh I think the wine will probably run on in the sub twenty U.S. dollar. I think I saw it on a U.S. importing site for nineteen ninety nine. So we're gonna give this a little bit of a taste. Nice little face off today. I like it. Yeah, even even the phone went face off. What? Even the phone went face off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so first of all, uh, we get a dark purple. Almost to garnet, like a purple into garnet color. Not ruby, not brick red, like a darker color starting to get a little bit more red. Let's give this a smell. A lot of wood action. Not super oaked, a lot of wood. You get a little cinnamon, a little vanilla. I get a lot of blue fruit. I get more, this is more granite smelling to me. Uh, when we're used to, but a lot of wood. What when you say? A lot of vanilla? Hold on, hold on. A lot of caramel? Yeah. Some dry earth, like, like a yucca, like I get I definitely get mint and I'm picking up some chocolate. And blueberries. Basically if I could mix if I could make a blueberry salad with a put a hint of mint in it and put it in an oak barrel. I think that's what an oak bowl, I think that's what this smells like. Let's give this a taste. Oh my. It's a lot of blueberries and it's sweet. Super Ooh. blueberry. The tannins are sweet. The oak is pronounced big time. Hold on. Um, so there, even though this is 14.5%, this is the same as the Stoby. Uh, you, you get, I get a little more body. The tannins are really... <clears throat> okay, think about this. I'm thinking like, think hot California Zinfandel but instead of the fruit flavors that you're getting from the Zinfandel, exchange that to blue fruit. Blue fruit, uh, vanilla, oak, some milkiness to it, some body to it, and some heat on the back end with a long finish, sweet tannins. I'm higher on this than Shireen is. You don't like it, right? I don't like it. <coughs> <coughs> I, I'm pretty high on this. Hold on. I'm gonna give this a four, four even, point four, four point zero. I, I kind of like it. So, which one would you choose if you uh, that you liked? Out of the three, Stoby. The Stoby, I think, is gonna please more international palates. And this is funny. My scoring systems. It's not. I'm not about scoring the wine. It's about which one I, which one I'm gonna choose. Uh. I scored the Stobie 4.1, the Bovin a 4, this probably 3.7, 3.8. Man, these are all so different. Like this I want with, this I want with a big, heavy, uh, something meat to, to dampen the sweet, the sweet tannins. This, uh, I could have, as I said, the body's thinner. I could have it like before the meal with an appetizer. This I think is just, Maybe you drink by itself. Give me one more second. Yeah, Hold on one, yeah. <laughs> Hold on one I second. Want, I want to try the first one again as well. This is a good face-off. This is a nice little format going on here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, it's so not a question. I gotta go back. I'm with Shireen. I think the Stobie wins. <laughs> um, these are all good wines. Like I said, for my personal scoring system on Vivino or my rating system, whatever, if anything starts to get over 3.7, I really like it. Uh, 3.7, 4.5, excellent. Five for me has to be transcendent. These are all very good wines. I think this is good value for money. I think this is something st that you seek out. So I think Stobie's the winner. What do you think? Yep. So this will conclude, I think, I don't think we have any Macedonian wines let to, left to taste off. This concludes the Macedonian section. I actually wish I would have spent a little bit more time in Macedonia and tasted more of the wines, but check out my Vivino account. I still scored, I think, over 50 to 60 Macedonian wines. And we're moving on to Bosnia-Herzegovina. So we're excited about that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel, and I will see you at the next episode.